village of Valley de Hop, at the southwestern tip of Ireland, is where petroleum geologist Colin Campbell has ended up after a lifetime roaming the world, from Bolivia to Papua New Guinea, Illinois to Norway. It was while he was working for Norway's Statoil, he tells me, that he first became interested in the concept of peak oil. He likes to explain the basics over a pint or three of Murphy's Stout. We could think about this glass here, compare it with the North Sea back in the 60s. Here was a, a new area just full of black, beautiful liquid, just marvelous. Now the North Sea's oil is half gone. But unlike a glass of stout, Dr. Campbell explains, the second half of an oil field is much harder and slower to consume than the first. Eventually, it's the immutable physics of the reservoir. The pressure is falling. It isn't a single, simple pool of oil in the ground. It's complex conditions. We tap smaller and smaller parts of fields. It's difficult. It's slow. I stress slow. It just doesn't pour out of the ground at 50,000 barrels a day. In its day, the technology which enabled Britain and Norway to find and exploit the massive oil and gas fields beneath the stormy North Sea was hailed as little short of miraculous. But Britain's North Sea oil bonanza is almost over. Thanks to the North Sea, it became a net oil exporter in 1981. Just seven years ago, in 1999, its oil production peaked at four and a half million barrels per day. By last year, production had slumped to a mere one and a half million barrels per day, 14% less than the year before and less than Britain's daily consumption. The rise and fall of Britain's North Sea oil produces a curve which is echoed, Colin Campbell argues, by oil province after oil province around the world. Every oil field has an individual profile of it's found, it eventually ends, it has a peak or plateau in between. And when you add up all the individual fields, naturally that gives a corresponding pattern for the country or region and eventually the world as a whole. The way to study this is to look at every individual country and every individual field and put them together, which I in fact have done. United States land-based production peaked way back in 1972. The discovery of Alaska's giant Prudhoe Bay field reversed the decline briefly. But despite all America's technology, the curve has proceeded downwards. Country after country has followed a similar path. Russia, Venezuela, Indonesia. According to Chevron, in 33 of the world's 48 most important oil producing countries, production has already peaked. Australia's peak crude oil production was passed in 2000. Campbell's gloomy prediction is that peak global production of cheap conventional oil may have already passed. If oil from deep water and the polar regions and liquids derived from gas are added, production will peak soon after 2010. Production, says Campbell, follows the path of discovery and discovery of new oil peaked 40 years ago. The discovery of oil has been falling ever since relentlessly um, and it's been falling despite a worldwide search always aimed at the biggest and best prospects. No one's looking for the smallest and the worst, the biggest and the best. It's been falling despite uh, amazing technological and geological advances. We understand this business so much more than we did. And I think there is no good reason to expect this downward trend to change direction. And I as Dr. Campbell tells audiences in a lecture he delivers all over Europe, as discovery has trended down in the past 50 years, consumption has kept on rising. The last year in which the world discovered more new oil than it used was 1981. So if we put it all together, this gives a valid, genuine picture without arguing endlessly whether the peak is this year, last year, 210 or whenever. What matters, and matters really very seriously, is the vision of the long decline that comes into sight on the other side of peak. That's really what matters, and that's really what we're talking about today. Throughout Through the 90s, with crude oil prices at historic lows, 
Colin Campbell's prophecies of doom received little attention. But he now has influential allies all over the world. In London, for example, there's the editor of Petroleum Review, an influential journal published by the UK Energy Institute. Chris Skrabowski has done his own survey of every major oil project in the world. His conclusions are bleak. The work I do, obviously, is, is based on publicly available data, and we're looking with some accuracy forward about six years. So out to 2012, we can be fairly confident uh, that we've got an idea of what's going on. And the answer there is that supply and demand remain pretty tight to about 2010, and after 2010, it really starts looking rather difficult. They don't add up very well. Are you saying that, as far as you can see from the figures that you look at and the projects that you look at, that supply will actually start to decline yes. from around 2011? Yes. Peak oil, in other words? Yes. And this really is the launch of ASPO Island. In 2000, Colin Campbell and like-minded European scientists launched ASPO, the Association for the Study of Peak Oil. And it looks as if ASPO Island can act as the secretariat for this world group that is forming and, and putting... ASPO now has a flourishing presence in cyberspace and active branches in a dozen countries, including a 